ever had one of those mornings where everything seems to go wrong from the moment you open your eyes? The Japanese client. Where are you? Mr. Nakamoto is waiting at the train station. You were supposed to pick him up. The culprit behind these chaotic days might be hiding in your own bedroom. To visualize how sleep can turn your world upside down, I got some help from Michael and Hugo. Let's shadow them for a day to see how a good or a bad night's sleep affects the following day, life and in extension, your own. Both return after studying for an upcoming test and their adenosine levels are already high. Adenosine is the regulator of sleep. It accumulates in the brain throughout the day, making you feel increasingly tired as it builds up. Sleep is the only effective way to clear adenosine from your body. Michael blows off steam by hitting his weight bands. Exercise is a powerful way to improve sleep quality and promote regenerative deep sleep. However, it's important to finish your workout at least two to three hours before bedtime, as exercise raises your body temperature and stimulates wakefulness. Ow! 7 p.m. It's dinner time. To help you sleep better, it's a good idea to finish eating at least three hours before bedtime. Like exercise, eating increases your body temperature, which keeps you awake. But after dinner, Hugo decides to have an espresso. What's the big deal? I sleep just fine. But do you really? Caffeine stays in your system for a long time. Imagine if you had an espresso at 9 p.m. Well, your body won't have processed even half of the 200 milligrams of caffeine in that cup until 2 to 3 a.m. That's way past even my bedtime. The way caffeine works is quite marvelous. It blocks the receptors that adenosine would normally latch onto to make us feel tired. For a good night's sleep, have your last caffeine-containing beverage around 10 hours before going to sleep. Let's check in on our duo. Michael has kicked off his winding down routine. He stashes his cell phone. <clears throat> he stashes his cell phone and switches off other LED emitting gadgets like screens. These devices emit blue light, which, while not harmful, can be stimulating and tricks our brain into thinking it's daytime. The result? Less melatonin, the sleep hormone is released, making it tough to fall asleep. But here's an interesting tidbit. Candlelight doesn't have this stimulatory effect. Ever considered turning your bedroom into a serene, candlelit haven? Michael is applying another useful sleep pack. A warm bath before bed. This counterintuitively lowers his body temperature, a crucial element in promoting sleep. This practice, along with maintaining a cool bedroom temperature around 65 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 degrees Celsius, promotes better sleep and helps you stay asleep. Hugo, on the other hand, has started to sedate himself with alcohol. Yes, alcohol is a sedative. It promotes a sleep-like state that unfortunately resembles general anesthesia and fragments your sleep causing brief awakenings throughout the night and ultimately leading to a less restful sleep. Who hired that guy? He's the producer's son. That explains everything. Let's stop for a second and delve into sleep stages. We sleep in 90 minute cycles, alternating between two types of sleep, non-REM and REM sleep. In the first half of the night, we primarily enter deep non-REM sleep, responsible for memory consolidation and tissue regeneration. During non-REM sleep, we transfer short-term memories to long-term storage, enhancing learning and memory while decluttering irrelevant details. In the second half of the night, REM or dream sleep takes over. This stage unlocks creativity and problem solving. 
It's where Keith Richards crafted satisfaction and Mendeleev devised a periodic table in his dreams. During REM sleep we also enhance emotional intelligence by resetting our innate ability to decode microfacial expressions. Moreover, REM sleep aids in processing and healing emotional trauma, providing relief from daily stresses or more profound events such as the passing of a loved one. In dream sleep, our emotional center is less reactive than usual and we have the opportunity to calmly relive memories but without the attached emotion, which gives conciliation and ultimately closure. Back to Hugo and Michael. Michael goes to bed at his usual time, which makes it easier for him to fall asleep compared to when he has variable bedtimes. At midnight, Hugo calls it a day and heads to bed. However, his caffeine levels are still quite high, preventing adenosine from working its magic to make him feel tired. He adds to his stress by placing an alarm clock right next to his nightstand, which he occasionally checks. If you know you have trouble falling asleep, it's best to banish the alarm clock from your bedroom, as it will only stress you out. If after 20 to 30 minutes you can't seem to fall asleep, get up and occupy yourself with something else. You need to train your body to associate the bed with sleep, rather than tossing and turning restlessly in bed. It's time to wake up. Michael rises without any trouble, feeling refreshed and prepared for the day ahead. He steps outside for 10 to 15 minutes to expose his eyes to sunlight, signaling to his internal clock that a new day has started. This practice helps clear away any morning grogginess. As a result, his adenosine levels are low as you expect after a restful night. Hugo had a terrible night. The caffeine kept him from falling asleep and the alcohol later impeded him from having restorative sleep. His adenosine levels have only decreased by around a third, contributing to his morning grogginess. Upon waking up, he repeatedly hits the snooze button. Every time the alarm rings, his body experiences stress, his heartbeat accelerates and his blood pressure increases. I wouldn't be surprised if this morning routine gives him a heart attack in the future. Okay. That's it. Let's call his, let's call his dad. Afterwards, Michael and Hugo hit the ergometer. As you can see from their speed, sleep-deprived Hugo is exhausted more quickly and his performance lags. Even his testosterone levels are lower than Michael's after a bad night's sleep. Another downfall is that Hugo is more prone to injuries. So athletes out there, watch your sleep. Hugo and Michael have an important exam today. And the day before, they studied for the same amount of time. Being sleep deprived has hindered Hugo's brain from relocating the studied information from his short term to his long term memory. He barely remembers anything he studied. This causes him to flunk the exam. So students out there, don't cut back on sleep for the finals. And if this wasn't enough, both of them sat close to someone who was <laughs> coughing and sneezing throughout the entire exam. Michael's immune system has no problem detecting and eliminating the virus. Hugo, on the other hand, will get sick in exactly two days, as his short sleep has depleted an important part of his immune system, his natural killer cells. In the long run, this will also predispose him to a greater risk for cancer. Time for lunch. Michael has a meal appropriate for his metabolic rate. Hugo has a problem. Sleep deprivation has caused his hunger hormones to be elevated, making him overeat by 300 calories throughout the day. While this might not sound like a lot in a single day, continuing this for a year will cause him to gain 10 to 15 pounds. As you can see, these are very interesting results. And these are only changes from one bad night. This is what happens in the long run if we cut back on sleep.
And if you spend too much time playing video games, I got the perfect video for you. Hello? Yeah, hello, sir. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Your, your son? Oh, yeah. He's in the video. He's doing great. Oh, such a great guy.